What's going on everybody? Just landed here in Cedar Rapids waiting for Doug to pick me up in the all original 30,000 mile Nova that he picked up. Uh, it's still got the carburetor, it's 100% stock, it's got like AC, heat, everything in it. But it's going to be a super cool little project we're going to do over the next few days. We're going to convert it from carb to EFI using a Holley Sniper and an aeromotive fuel system and a few other cool pieces for the project that we got. So I'm just waiting for him to pick me up now and then we'll get it started. For those of you that do not know, my full-time job is doing social media and this type of work for motion. So I've flown in to film it and just document the process, create videos of it, and then that all that will be going up on Motion's uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and all those types of things. So it's a pretty fun job, and that's what we're here to do is uh, bring value to you guys so you guys can learn how to swap some of this stuff, and I figured it'd be a good collab between Build Tune Race and Motion Race Works to bring you guys, I know a lot of you guys like the Holly stuff, the EFI, the tuning, so hopefully bring you guys some of that cool value in this video as well. Oh, there it is. Check this out. All original. <laughs> oh, this thing is dope. <laughs> Made it. Now we just got to make it back home. <laughs> this thing is sick, dude. Look how clean it is. So nice. 72 Nova electric Tesla. <laughs> Which one yeah. So Doug and the guys in motion have a little bet going on at how many miles to the gallon it'll get with the stock carb. It's a two barrel 350. So we'll see kind of how it does. We're gonna go right back to the gas station they filled up before he came to pick me up at. We'll see how it does. He's thinking it's doing pretty decent. Like, what'd you think? You're, you're, well, like, it's at like above quarter of a tank or three quarters of a tank, but I don't know how often. It took you what, about 45 minutes to get me? No, an hour and a half. So I well, think, one way, so okay. I don't know the exact mileage. That's like 75 so it's, it's miles. It's probably quite a while, so yeah. it'll be a good test. It's perfect. He said we're mostly doing back roads back to the uh, gas station, like what would be normal for the car and like back in the day, 55, 60 mile an hour. So see, see how it does. And then when I drop you off, we'll put EFI on it and uh, yep. see what it does. We'll do back. the same thing. And it, it might pick up quite a bit. It might, might not. I'm wondering bunch, if it's going to pick up at all versus a two barrel. I mean, so that's we'll the see. thing. It, it definitely should. Like right now, you can tell the idle's not yeah, it's real, the most ideal. It's, it's kind of kind of rough. And so drivability will definitely improve, but it'll be curious to see if we actually pick up miles per gallon on Hold this on. deal. <laughs> oh. Oh, look. Oh, man. It is so, just yeah, this thing. Is, it is it ideal. Works, though, it's, it's so good. Like, like, it, like the dash is hardly even cracked. Like, I don't even know if it is cracked. It's like. No, none. It's super nice. 31,000 miles. Like probably garage kept all its life. Just pristine. <laughs> all right, so check this thing out. It is super clean. I mean, it's got a little wear and tear, 30,000 mile, but it's it's super clean car. So Doug picked me up, ended up using about seven, mile, seven gallons to come get me. And he just did the calculation, came out to 18 point what? Nine? 18.93, almost 19. Almost 19 miles to the gallon on this two barrel 350 car. He, he took like mostly back roads, like 55 mile an hour and stuff, but uh, just normal driving. How many miles round trip it is? 122 by GPS, and I will note I did hammer down a couple times <laughs> just to see what those two barrels So it's, it's just, sometimes you gotta pass people in this thing. So uh, that's where it's at, so exceptionally well. So even with the Holly, I, I don't know if we're gonna get better fuel mileage by going from a two barrel carb to a four barrel like throttle body style injection but I mean compared to like having a consistent AFR and all of that stuff with the EFI system you'd think you will but it would be curious would be like what AFR is this thing running at like right now like cruising like is it lean cruise is it like yeah. you wonder but it runs really good it runs good it doesn't seem to do anything rough or idles rough a little bit otherwise it just cruises right down the highway so It'll be interesting to see how this all, all shakes down. Let's see how this is going to work out. Good old carb car. Look at that. Fires right up even. Not too bad. <laughs> so I'm going to be driving the Nova to work. Doug's going to be taking his truck. And then we're going to uh, go pull this perfectly good running car apart and swap a TFI. So a funny thing about this car is all you have is a speedometer. You have no like tack gauge or anything. All right, everyone, I'm here at Motion. I work from home usually, but I'm here on site today. It's Doug and I are gonna be working on his Nova. This thing is so clean, it's so fun. I drove it in today, as you guys saw, and it was, it's a neat car. It's just, it's a time capsule like Doug calls it. So uh, if you guys don't know or haven't seen Doug, this is Doug, 
one of the owners here at Motion. Uh, appreciate him for giving me a job opportunity where I get to come play with cars like this. So uh, hopefully we do a lot more of this in the future, this kind of like collaboration and playing with cars. And I'm gonna get to play with this sniper right here. A lot of you guys follow the Holly stuff on the channel. So uh, I'm excited to play with one of those. To do that, we need fuel injection, 45-ish uh, PSI fuel pressure. So we got an Aeromotive tank from Aeromotive here. This is a direct replacement tank for the Nova. So makes it super easy. We'll build lines from there up to the sniper, wire that thing in, and we'll see how this goes. Well, we're hoping it goes real smooth and easy, but as everybody knows with project cars, sometimes there's hiccups. So we're gonna uh, bolt this stuff on throughout the week. Also, we're gonna do a full build series on Motion, social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all that stuff. So I'll make sure I'll leave all the links below so you guys can jump over there and follow the true build process of it, but giving you guys a little behind the scenes, if you will, here. All right, everyone, so we went ahead and started with the tank. We got the old one out. We got the new Airmotive Stealth sitting here. Uh, went ahead and ran wires and lines. Gonna show you guys. On a EFI car, you have to have that 40 to 60 PSI of fuel pressure. So you have to go to an electric fuel pump, which is all triggered by the Stealth and all of that. So uh, this is what we got so far. So here's the tank all set up, ready to go. Fuel level for the stock gauge, the ground, which will come over to chassis and then power wire that'll go to the relay. Usually in the EFI systems, they give you a trigger wire, not a wire to power the pump with, just a trigger wire, a signal wire. So this will go to the relay, and then off of the stealth, you're gonna have that trigger wire that tells the pump when to run. Uh, and then using some nice line here, went ahead and it's gonna have to tuck up against the body here because the car is all original and that's how the muffler is, isn't it? It's tight to the back here. As you guys can see, the straps are literally right next to the muffler so trying to keep it all tight but otherwise this is a quick way to do it um a lot of people too will run just like an, an easy like 255 inline pump or whatever if you're trying to modify the stock tank but like this is the easiest way it just bolts in and goes all right everyone so we just finished up pretty much day one here we got the tank in ended up running 6 a in line to the front of the car um, everything's just kind of hanging up there. We got some power wire here, but we're gonna get some sheathing for it to uh, protect it and then run this up along it as well. Um, but the tank goes right back in, uses the stock straps, everything. So it's actually really, really pretty easy. Um, it was tight on, so the fuel lines were pretty tight. Uh, pretty much went with like a 90 and a 45 off of the tank there and ran it along the side of the muffler, um, tucked up against the tank. And then it comes over, turns, comes around here, fuel filter, and uses all the stock hangers all the way up into the front of the engine bay. So pretty pretty easy install. I mean, it wasn't wasn't bad at all. And uh, tomorrow we gotta get the intake and everything off the motor. Hey everyone, welcome to day two on the Nova build. We're gonna start pulling the intake off of this. It's got a two barrel car, this little itty bitty thing right here. So um, we're going to get this intake off. Sucks that it's uh, not an LS type deal. So you got all the coolant passages and distributor we gotta pull out and all that stuff. But uh, on a car that you want to go to a four barrel, you've got to swap the intake and then you can use the four barrel sniper on it. So we're going to get that done, get that, and then we're also going to get the exhaust. Uh, we got to put the O2 sensor in for the sniper on this. So we're going to work on getting the O2 sensor put into the exhaust on this car and go from there for today. So got the tank all finished up last night. That went in all real easy. So here is the Holly sniper. Pretty cool. All this comes in the box. Um, the throttle body, this is for 4150, good to 650 horsepower. Comes with the O2 sensor, Doug's trying to figure out where exactly it's going to go on this deal. Um, and then all the wiring is pretty cool. It comes out of the rear of this unit. It has 6A in line, which we ran up front. The harness, the little dash, this is like what I run on the Camaro. Um, so you end up having gauges, and this is actually how you can do a lot of the tuning on this system. Right out of the box, you don't need like a laptop or anything. Some gaskets loom and everything pretty much you need also it needs a coolant temp sensor to hook up to the car um so like cold starts and everything that's that's the key so it knows how much enrichment to add there if you do not have a welder at home we're probably going to try to take weld it in or we might end up using these clamps here it comes with these clamps and this little o2 bung that you just got to drill a hole with this gasket so you don't even have to have a welder at home which is really cool it saves a lot of people that don't have that skill or the tools to do that and then of course the O2 sensor that's kind of the magic piece of all of it. So we're gonna uh, get this all kind of installed on the car we wanted to before we pull the intake off to get the four barrel intake on for this. We wanted to go ahead and get the O2 sensor in so we're not sending sparks or anything everywhere. 
Um, so we're going to try to get that installed. So that's what we're going to do for the sniper system to get it installed, do those few things. Um, it also comes with a bunch of instructions and everything to kind of follow through. Holly is really good with a lot of their products and giving you um, a good like step-by-step -step on how to set it up. So take your time, read through it a few times, and um, there's a few notes like, no, do this, no, do that. That's stuff you have to do. If not, you're going to run into issues later. So we're going to go ahead and get the O2 sensor in and then work our way up to installing the throttle body. So something that's cool about these units is like this is the TPS sensor here. Usually the map sensor is somewhere in here as well. Um, the IAC, so this is, looks like just like a regular LS IAC controller. Um, so it helps the car idle and everything. So quite the deal uh, that it's all in that unit and then all really have some wiring that comes out of it. So all your sensors are in here and you're not having to like tap in anywhere else. Uh, I'm not too familiar with small block Chevys, but I guess this coolant temp sensor will go right into a stock location, which saves you a lot of time and headaches there too. So I'm about halfway through getting this intake off, hopefully a little bit further than, but something to remember whenever you're messing with old small block stuff is, compared to new LS or uh, new LT is how much stuff I never realized really goes through the intake, connects to the intake, they use the intake to mount stuff too. So you got your alternator mount there, you got the AC mount that comes over and ties to it. You got your distributor that goes through it. You got water pass throughs that go into it. So um, removing a small block Chevy intake is quite a bit more complex than you might think. All right, so we got the distributor just laying there. Got all the coolant lines pulled off. Got all the intake bolts out of it. Just gonna try to lift this. We're gonna clean it up a little bit so none of the crap falls down into the engine. And then this will go on. Doug's handiwork here of uh, just giving it a good little orange paint job. Leaving, leaving a little bit of uh, black on there to kind of mimic the oil and grime and everything. So it just it looks the part when it goes back on and does not look too crazy. Uh, and then he'll get a air cleaner that'll kind of cover up that. So really everything will look mostly like the way that it should um, when it all goes back together. Good old small block Chevy. So paper gaskets and all that jazz. So we will go ahead and clean up all the ports and get the new intake ready to go on. All right, everyone, we got the four barrel intake on. It is a lot harder to put a small block Chevy intake on than like an LS. Got it on there, we got the sniper just sitting there. We'll have to start routing all the lines and getting everything tied together as well as a lot of the factory vacuum lines. So the sniper does have some vacuum lines on the back of the throttle body to tie everything back to so you can get reference points and all of that. But otherwise we're gonna get it bolted on, wired up, and then hopefully move on to doing some tuning. Everyone's back at it here again today. Got the throttle body all bolted up, starting to run like the throttle cables back over to it. Doug just finished up the fuel and return lines, which is really cool on this sniper. This right here is a uh, regulator, like 58 PSI. So the feed comes in over here, return there. Uh, if you want, you can bypass this and like come out one of these other ports uh, into a regulator. If you're wanting to make more power or go like the 340 fuel pump is what they say is about max that you want to run. So if you're in a really big fuel pump on your car for possibly a bigger combo later, you might want to bypass that regulator. But otherwise it bolted up all pretty easy. Um, real simple being able to run fuel lines just to the edges and not having to run a regulator. So we're going to go ahead and finish that up, get the wires ran and hopefully fire this thing up. We decided to put the dash here in the glove box, try to hide it. And then I'm going to take the little can cable and feed it through uh, a little rubber grommet that we put right up here in the firewall. So we got the dash ran through the firewall back here. It comes over. All the plugs for the EFI are here in the back. The main harness plug is right here. Um, this is if you're running like a distributor and you're going to control timing with it, um, like a sync distributor from Holly or MSD or whatever, I believe. So on a lot of these cars, it is always difficult to find that power wire that is on on the on position and while cranking um they want a clean signal but so the coil on a lot of these old cars will work um for that but it is a dirty signal so you actually just use the power wire off of the coil as the signal go to a relay which will trip it and give you 12 volts during on and cranking um and then everything should work so we're going to try that on this and see how it goes so we're going to get a few more wires ran and hooked up and then we should be really close all right, everything is hooked up. Got the power here, ground there. Everything runs along to the back of um, the new throttle body. 
and it looks good. We uh, reattached all the vacuum lines to the back ports. There's a few back here, so depending on what you're running, there's a couple different vacuum points you can use on the back of the throttle body there. So we got fuel in the back of the car now, and we're gonna go ahead and start it. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have fuel in the new tank or whatever tank you're using before you do this because sometimes with the Holly, I'm not sure on the Sniper, as soon as you key on, it will run the prime on the pump. Sometimes it keeps it running and if it doesn't have anything to pick up, it could get hot and burn up your brand new pump. So definitely do not do that. Okay hey guys, since uh, we're new to this, you're new to this, we're just gonna walk through the steps. So we just have their, the Holly instruction manual open. First step is to select wizards. Um, it's going to ask you which one of these that you have. We have the 550-511, uh, so it'll be that first line for injector 4150. Um, we're going to hit next. We have eight cylinders. Hopefully they're all firing. We're going to hit next. Engine displacement. So we're going to go up. We got about 350. We're gonna hit next. Target idle speed. Um, this is to select and uh, set your desired hot idle speed. Um, so it says that it will do this over 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna go ahead and try it at 850. You always wanna start a little bit higher at this step because you're initially first starting something, it might be a new engine. Whatever, so make sure that this is a little higher and you can always come back and lower this later. So now it's asking about the cam type. This thing is stock as stock can get. So we're gonna hit next, stock, next. No power adder type. This thing makes plenty in a. Um, we're gonna do coil negative because uh, we're not using this to control any spark at all whatsoever. After answering all the questions in the wizard, your calibration will be created. Press the start button to send the calibration to the ECU. So now it's gonna go ahead and send that. Now you can hear the fuel pump running, so it's gonna go ahead and prime that. So we can go ahead and probably check for leaks and make sure we're good on all of our uh, fittings. Now it's wanting us to go ahead and turn the ignition off and then back on again. So we're gonna hit our login or monitor, multi gauge, sensors. So uh, battery volts, we have uh, air temperature, timing, which wouldn't work. Coolant temp sensor is probably about 84, so give it a shot now. All right, everyone, so a little bit later, fast forward like two hours, um, we have that coil wire coming over to trigger a relay to give us that key on and while cranking signal that we talked about. This is probably the most important wire um, out of the whole system because it's what triggers it all and probably the most pain to find on any sort of old vehicle. Um, like on the Mazda, I've used a uh, toggle switch, which works out for like not running electric water pump and writing the computer and all that. But if you guys want to work it where it's always key on, um, in the Nova, Doug ended up finding an ignition source and an ignition wire off of the key um, that does do that in this car. So don't try to shortcut it. Don't try to figure out something else. Just find you a good source or use a toggle if you had to or whatever but it has to be a good clean 12 volt while on and cranking. Um, we thought we were good with the coil. We'd crank it, everything would fire, run. Sometimes it would trip it, sometimes it wouldn't, like if it had just enough voltage, but usually it sat at like seven once we checked it with the multimeter. If you're getting ready to do any sort of wiring, use a multimeter, look over everything, make sure it's got 12 volts, make sure it doesn't fall out real bad once you're cranking. I think the source we're on now has like 10 during cranking, so it still has good voltage there. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that, and then we're gonna go ahead and fire this up. We have fired it, it did run. Um, it seems pretty decent, but we were fighting the kind of intermittent issues. So once we get this wire hooked up, we should be good. Try to figure out timing. It's an old car. None of us really have messed with timing lights or timing or distributors or anything. So that's something new we're all kind of learning as well. But we're gonna get it running and go take it for a cruise here in a bit. 
Ooh, out cruising it. Doing pretty good. We uh, just watching AFRs and cooling temp and out doing a little cruise. The Nova's doing pretty pretty well with this little guy on here. <laughs> pretty simple. It's just we're just so we're just doing a, another drive to uh, just make sure everything's in. It's learning. It's kind of matching the target air fuel for what uh, what we tell it we want. Most cars, gasoline 14.7 at idle, 13.0 uh, ish, 12.8, 12 12.5, 12 depending on kind of how much power the car's making, what it likes, timing wise and stuff too. Um, that wide open throttle, and you kind of plug the parameters in and then you just go drive it and kind of verify that it's matching what you want. Bearing, throttle, everything else. So we, uh, it tells you in the book to make sure at idle that I acts at like one to 10%. Um, at idle so then it has enough IAC probably to catch it whenever you go into gear and all that stuff Pretty easy pretty simple really once you I mean as far as this part of the tuning and like plugging parameters in stuff That was super easy. It was just make sure we had the right wire on the yeah, ignition I'm, wire and timing set It's been easy. Yeah, ultimately once we got that uh, the whole uh, timing issue figured out this thing is it's basically a relearn, like we never even ran it last night, yeah. and uh, this time around was literally perfect. It just did exactly what it needed to do, and uh, we really haven't had to mess with much, so it's pretty amazing. Go drive it and enjoy it now. <laughs> yeah, like right now we just pulled up to a stop, brakes, zero speed, uh, put it in reverse, everything, switching gears, it has no, um, no real issues, so well, it just basically does what it needs to do it comes to idle it comes off idle everything just perfectly so and idle at like right now still like that 650 to 700 range like the car was originally and the car definitely had a, a stumble um whether that was plugs wires but it just definitely didn't like idle very smooth and now the car idles so much smoother um you don't have that like anxiety when you pull up to a stop that maybe it'll die or maybe it'll cough whenever you like kind of go to take off it just pulls away yeah the bubble now the only thing uh the sniper didn't do was give me the extra 200 horsepower out of this <laughs> engine that i was really <laughs> hoping for i think if i did it again i'd just put the two barrel the 2gc option on it that, and that would have made it so much quicker yeah we like, would have had this thing done in day day and a half top All right, everyone, that is it for the Nova Sniper Swap Project. Um, Doug's gonna run me to the airport. It's time for me to head back to Colorado. But what a fun time. Uh, real first kind of small block, screwing around with that, figuring out timing, doing all that stuff that we kind of battled to get it running right. But to make sure you guys check out the full install and not just my parts of it, uh, go to Motion Raceworks YouTube, Facebook page, all that. Check it out. Um, part of this project was figuring out a fuel system for it making all the power now <laughs> um making a fuel line kit and everything for it to make it even easier to swap from the air motive tank up to the sniper so it's more or less like a turnkey deal so we're gonna head to the airport but i appreciate everyone for watching if you would please hit that like subscribe and share button make sure you go check out the videos on the nova and we'll see you guys next time